Hi everybody, uh, Ben Strong here again from the U.S. Coast Guard. Um, and I want to share a bit with you about the uh, combined Arctic Coast Guard Forum, uh, uh, EPPR, Arctic Council of Emergency Prevention, Preparedness and Response, uh, SAR Expert Group, Working Group, blah, 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 combined project on casualty tracking. Um, so a little bit of history, because if I can't bore you to death, uh, then I'm not doing my job. <coughs> um, this is all based on, what? Don't be bashful. Oh, the guy was gonna I gotta be Nothing honest. Wrong. Nothing is wrong. Good, thank you. You can come up too if you want. Or you're gonna sit there. Okay. So just some background because it's it's probably good that we have a, a little bit of a foundation of, of what it is we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, and so it starts with the uh, agreement on cooperation in aeronautical and maritime search and rescue in the Arctic or the Arctic SAR agreement seeks to create uh, cooperation among Arctic countries or states and enhance the readiness to respond. Not that dissimilar from ARCSAR, and it's one of the reasons that I come from EPPR is that we're kind of connected at the hip. I don't know how you would say it, Emmy. Um, but, but we're partnered together in both um, EPPR, the Arctic Council, and, uh, and ARCSAR. Um, and you know, what is the SAR expert group, which is a relatively new expert group um, in the Arctic Council, what do we do? You can see the list of our kind of our mandate or our requirements. These are the things that, and it's lots of fancy language, we're supposed to collaborate and work with folks like you and then share those findings. Uh, a lot of more words, blah, 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 words, words, words. Um, <laughs> what's important here is that there's now a statement of cooperation between folks like me, colleagues in the Arctic Coast Guard Forum. So think of the snake eaters, the operational folks. So where's this? Norway is a snake eater. Uh, operational, you're not really a snake eater, but uh, the operational people, the folks who are going out in the boats and the folks who are going out in the helicopters and writing the, not necessarily writing the plans, although there are some plan writers there. And then EPPR and the Arctic Council are kind of the old kind of chubby white guys like me who are, um, who were probably fantastic operators back in our day and we're a little bit more now at the policy level, at the 30,000 foot level, but it's a great marriage between the two of us. Um, and this statement of cooperation led to the first project um, between the Arctic Coast Guard Forum, a combined project between the Arctic Coast Guard Forum and EPPR, and that is this. Now, it, it, it was a proposal on casualty tracking, and I think I have to be careful with words, because for our operators and for our cruise industry professionals, we here today are not casualties, because we haven't been lost or hurt yet, have we? Not yet. Uh, and we don't intend to be, um, but for SAR people like me, y yes, you are all casualties, so I'm sorry about that. but. Um, so kind of try to ignore casualty tracking and maybe we can think a little bit broader. Hi, come on up. You can get in the front. Yeah. Um, try to think of it more of like people tracking. So we had a, uh, a proposal on, and again, I'm just going to kind of keep calling it casualty tracking. Um, but if we go back, and I, you have to thank folks like Icelandic Coast Guard and Frigg because they, not we, but I helped out a little bit, have been doing exercises for years now. And one of the findings that always comes out is that it's hard to keep track of all the people. Um, and for the operators, what are some of the ways that you do it with paper and pencil or with grease pencil? Or how do you do it on the ship sometimes with the sign in and sign out board? A lot of paper and pencil and there's nothing wrong with analog methods. I'm a big fan of two is one and one is none. So you have to have the redundancy. So this project proposal, um, you know, that talks about technology and demonstrating practical solutions and things like that is not meant to replace paper and pencil or a grease board and a grease pencil or a Sharpie, or not a Sharpie, but you know, a write on the uh, whiteboard and, a, and a, a whiteboard pen. You know, that's not meant to replace those types of things. Um, but we need the, the, the redundancy and, and sometimes the triple redundancy. Um, but let's go, I was talking about a echo and, and exercises, the TTXs that go back, you know, to 2017. Uh, gaps, tracking passengers, keeping passengers calm and avoiding panic, looking for passengers in silly places. 
you have probably, some of you may have seen me in some silly places. Um, and, and who knows where people may be, but we have to be able to account for all of the folks. Who's responsible for their, for their movements? So we do a really good job of talking about the challenges and saying, oh, Emmy, that's a good idea. We should look into that further and investigate that. I'll meet you at the bar. <laughs> and then we high five and right, we have a pint. Miguel knows what I mean. We've done it in Bodo. And we move on. And, and here we are again now in 2022 still talking about the same challenge over and over and over again. Or I'll look at Natalia, Nord University. This is an application that could be used in a public health emergency. Or if a town floods and a community has to, how do you keep track of all of these people? So think a little bit broader than just where we are on a, on a passenger vessel or a cruise ship. Um, but what were we going to do? And it was the combined exercise with the Arctic Coast Guard Forum and the Arctic Council Arctic Guardian, where uh, the outcome was uh, a casualty tracking workshop. And the recommendation is the exploration of standardization, compatibility, and systems combining the work of the Arctic Coast Guard Forum Combined Operations Working Group and the EPPR SAR Expert Group to explore various, and there's that first word, right, analog, kind of the old-fashioned ways, or the tried and true ways, and, um, and digital technologies to standardize, maybe that's too strong a word, but to at least kind of explore and standardize tracking, um, and then make recommendations on the implementation. And I know that, uh, so uh, uh, one of the folks that I worked with very, very closely, um, Steve Thompson with uh, uh, ACGF, with the Arctic Coast Guard Forum Combined Ops Working Group, and in the Canadian Coast Guard, we had some uh, video calls. We talked with some of our uh, partners like Frigg, and we talked to folks in academia. Um, and we decided we wanted, you know, X Prize is probably too strong a word, but we wanted to go from having the discussions to actually bringing people together to say, demonstrate your technology. And we had a marvelous plan. Um, and then if you're, uh, you know that the Arctic Council uh, and the Arctic Coast Guard Forum took a pause. And so that was a, that was a big challenge. And many folks would say that that was a, a failure in our ability to move forward um, with this project. And, you know, if there's a silver lining with every challenge, so not being able to move forward, you know, we had COVID, we couldn't meet in person. Um, now we've got this tremendous idea and we can't move forward in person because of geopolitical challenges. Um, the one thing that you may be aware of that, that kind of changed um, in tracking things is the uh, luggage debacle at London Heathrow Airport. And everybody who's chuckling knows exactly what I'm talking about. And if you don't know, you haven't traveled through Terminal 5 and lost your bag. Um, but you have, haven't you? No, but you know what I'm talking about. So the technology from the time that we were on Zoom calls and on, on team calls talking about um, what, you know, what technology is out there, and I'll, I'll kind of make a bold statement. I think the answer is already there. The solution is there. We just haven't found the person who invented it yet. The technology is out there to do this um, uh, correctly and and inexpensively and, and accurately. So we had a, a big plan, right, Frig? This is a big, glorious, remarkable plan. <laughs> it was going to bring in smart people from around the world, from you know Apple and Google, and we had a smart guy, way smarter than me, from 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 Microsoft on the calls, and and then you write the big red blah 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 date subject to change again because of the pause. Um, uh, with Arctic Council and Arctic Coast Guard Forum. But I talked about um, what happened in London uh, and with luggage. And you know what? Who, everybody knows what this is, right? This is an Apple AirTag. This is $25. And this seems to be revolutionizing tracking things. So the technology moved ahead while we were pausing. So, okay, hooray. So we haven't given up yet. The project will still go forward. And this is, now this is where I disappoint. How? Haven't the foggiest idea how it's gonna do that. We'll figure that out a little bit later. I have absolutely no idea. But I know I'm in the right room because there's a lot of folks here who may have some bright ideas. So tonight, you can buy me a beer and tell me about your good ideas. And I shouldn't, I shouldn't be so, so funny. 
um, it, it's okay to have stumbled a little bit because, again, the technology has changed. Uh, just look at the top, well, depending on where you're looking, under worth, underneath the word current. RECO, RICO, if I'm saying that right, that's a pretty remarkable technology for avalanche rescue. And you put an antenna on a helicopter or have a direction finder. So that, how do we marry that with maybe something small like an inReach, or maybe not this, maybe this is too big, onto one of these using Bluetooth, couple it with Artemis on your phone, and sew it inside a life-saving appliance of a vest or your um, or your survival suit. And if we can do that, we might have cracked the code, right? It might actually be pretty simple. So I've, I've shared a little bit about the project, which didn't start, hasn't been planned yet, <laughs> and we're not quite sure when it's going to happen. But I'll... I guess I'll kind of potentially end with this and then open it up to questions and maybe stir a little debate. I'm confident, confident, I'll say it outright, I'm confident that the challenge will be solved, which then opens the door to new challenges, which is, can we get industry, Not, and I don't want to, I'm going to say industry and not mean the operators. I'm going to mean industry and, and mean the regulators. Is this something that then uh, a flag state or a country needs to take to IMO to make it a regulatory, it becomes a regulatory problem. And if we've worked with the IMO, and I, I'm not speaking ill of the IMO, but the regulatory process can, can sometimes, can sometimes, can be a much longer process than the development or the implementation. Um, it's the regulatory process that can be a challenge. But I'll take a couple of steps back. I'm confident that the solution is out there one of you probably knows somebody, and later tonight at the bar will help solve it. So, questions, comments. Comment, yeah. comment. Uh, just, um, I mean, we want to track people, and. Uh, and I find, I find this with the phone quite good because you don't leave it somewhere. You just uh, you bring it and you usually, at least today, have one or sometimes some person have more. But for example, the air tags, uh, yeah, and uh, they looks great. But the problem is that they may be very too small and too cheap. So I might have five of them. I have one in my pocket because I always forget where I put my jacket so I can find my jacket. And then if you start to use something like that for tracking people and you find uh, you like doing a big uh, research and just for an empty jacket that I forget somewhere so it's, it's how we need to might make sure it's actually a person and not a pair of shoes that yeah. Uh, yeah so how do we do that yeah well you're asking me that yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so just like down in my cabin I've got a life vest self-inflatable life vest and it says cabin 305 Perhaps you just sew this into a pocket. The battery here lasts for a year. Now this probably isn't good enough because it doesn't have framazoidal IP7 whatever blah 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 waterproofness. I don't know all the technical terms, but we can fix all of that, right? So sew it into the vest. When I come on to the cruise, I'm assigned vest number 305 and now and make it so I can't take it out because somebody will find a way to break it and their cabin mate will find a way to hide it, right? Because we can do that. I mean, we're capable of breaking things and then hiding things. But I don't, I don't know that I really know the answer, but I, I, I understand the challenge. Yeah. What happens if I don't have this with me? Well, that's why we have triple or double redundancy. That's why we have redundancy. So we've got the paper manifests and we've got grease pencils and things like that. But, you know. What about thumb wrists? So, <clears throat> so put it in a bracelet, except what if I take my bracelet off? So that's a, that's a potential opportunity. Some folks, and I'll pose this now before somebody else says something. Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want you tracking me. I have privacy issues. I don't, what if I decide that I am going down to Emmy's cabin later? And I don't want you to know, that came out the wrong way. I don't want you to know that I'm going down to Emmy's cabin because my partner is in 305, but I'm going down to the master suite um, and I don't want you to know that. And now you can tell, and then you're going to subpoena that when my partner decides that it's time to 
throw me out. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I, don't, I don't care. I think that I do care. I think though that people who are traveling on a on a, a, a quality excursion have a right to be saved and perhaps may have to give up a little bit of um, of that ability or you can incentivize something like this and I don't I'll ask the guides I don't know um, we're up here and there's no way for anybody to kind of see where I am and in this in the world we live in depending on the customers they want their friends they want Instagrammable things and photographs that are great on Facebook if I opt into this and you have an ability to share it now I can create a breadcrumb trail of where I'm going across the Arctic or in these exotic areas this is a once-in-a-lifetime trip for most people and we're lucky enough to be able to do this sometimes several times a year or over multiple seasons so perhaps you can incentivize this type of um, invasion of privacy or get over that invasion of privacy hurdle by saying this gives you the ability to share your once-in-a-lifetime journey with your friends and family so yes No, you're right. And I recently just made a family trip to Disney, and I didn't do the band, like Snorri had mentioned, wearing a wristband, but I was given a card. Everything was tied to my to the RFID in my card. Uh, I didn't stay at a hotel or go into a cabin, but the bad food that we purchased, the food at Disney is good, uh, the food that we purchased was via the card. The pictures of Mickey and the kids and everybody was all done by the card. And then when we left, I got a text message that said, if you want the photographs and the memories and all of those things, you better purchase it by such a date, or the card and all of the data that tied it to me will be erased. And people like, you know, people <coughs> want that. You know what I mean? Folks line up and get excited about getting the magic bands or getting a way to, to have all that stuff available in the cloud. But you had a question too. And I don't know if I answered yours, but you're right. The technology, we're probably all broadcasting our location right now without even thinking about it. But yes? Um, it's just a, I was to suggest RFID. If you're looking for someone, the number of people that on board at any time, then an RFID cap associated with this could put you in particular town all around leaving the boat. And it doesn't rely on GPS, so being within the ship would know exactly where everybody was, and that costs nothing. Yeah. Um, it's when you go outside the point where you need GPS, which then it becomes a infrastructure. Yeah, so I mean, you know, this is the... <clears throat> Can you repeat your question, please? Yeah, sorry. So the, the discussion, or the, the comment was on RFID, and that uh, it will make me smarter. Um, using RFID on pass would be able to track everybody on board uh, the ship, exactly where they are, and also when they leave, how they do it, come back, etc. Doesn't rely on GPS and costs next to nothing. But it is a localized thing, so the captain would know exactly the number of people on board or where they are, etc. Mm -hmm. Other stuff outside relies on infrastructure like GPS. So maybe we take RFID, put it inside the tag. We've got double redundancy there. I mean, I, I really think that there are lots of solutions that can be paired together. And again, we just, we need to find, right? It's probably a high school kid who's done this um, and find the person who's, who's did this. But Rob. Um, yeah, have large cruise companies been using something like this that's tied to their key, the key card in their, to get into their cabin? So yes and no. No, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Uh, yes, some cruise operators have been using using things like this 
exclusive of the Arctic or Frig? Are any members using it in the Arctic? Some are. Yeah. Okay. So, so, I, so no, we don't need to reinvent the wheel, but perhaps we need to make the wheel a little more efficient and figure out how do we, if it's already being broadcast, how do we now receive it? So maybe we just need to, to tune our antenna a little differently. Yeah, I'm being a bit facetious. I know no, I, I, I know that that system is not perfect either. Yep. But, um, and are you talking about something that just tracks the number of people in a given location during the, the assembly phase? Or are you talking about when you get them into lifeboats or when you get them to shore? Yeah, so what's interesting, if you read the after-action report for Viking Sky, which was the cruise ship that was dead in the water off the coast of Norway, uh, one of the challenges, for, and, and people who were rescued, some were taken by helicopter and went to location X, and some didn't and ended up at different, I'm using kind of a military term, a casualty collection point, but went to different places where volunteer rescuers, most of them using a mobile phone, so that's kind of where I, I'm thinking like tile or air tags is, is helpful, are using a mobile phone where they're using their volunteer Red Cross app to log you into the system. Um, ideally, I want, ideally I would like the person from a safety perspective to be tracked, to be, I would like to have personnel situational awareness. That's about as, non, that's about as politically correct way as I can say as possible. I personally would like to have individual, um, you know, accountability, situational awareness, literally, I, I, I don't want to say cradle to grave, but from the moment you step foot on the gangway to the moment you go home. I'll buy you beer later. Okay. <laughs> I kind of need to stick to the schedule. You have to stick to the schedule? Yeah, okay. Probably, and I want to give some time for the. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, so oh, I'm still going. Okay. I hope I that if you have any good ideas, I think. Yep. All right. Meet you at the bar. Thank you. <laughs>